Today I want to talk about the PHY tool and I call it the Universal Deployment Tool. My name is Thomas Lange. I am working at the University of Cologne, started like 20 years ago running SunOS machines on Spark hardware and there uh, there was this jumpstart automatic installation thing. Then in 1999 we had the first cluster, very yeah, old cluster, dual Pentium 2 that we had to install and since I'm very lazy I wanted to do something automatically. During this time there was nothing um, for an automatic installation with Debian. We choose Debian for this cluster and so since there was nothing um, I started the Phi project. What is a deployment in the view of Phi? Phi was started as the fully automatic installation. So we want to install a machine. Uh, and installing means we have all zeros on the hard disk, so it's a really empty disk. And we want to make the computer ready to go that the user can uh, work on it. So from power off to applications running or that the user can log in. And for Phi, it's always about installing software packages. Even the kernel or some applications, uh, Phi depends on this, that everything is packed into a software package and Phi installs and configures all these packages for you in a very automatically way. And we have a central administration because everything is on a server and a lot of clients can be controlled and installed from the server. So, Phi does everything a sysadmin, and I guess most of you are sysadmins, so everything that you have to do, normally putting in a CD and installing the machine, configuring uh, and editing files in slash etc, so that the brand new computer can be used. We have a server, this is an installed server where everything is running on it and um, we Phi then configures the operating system and the applications. Here I wrote both operating system and application but in the end it's all about software packages that get installed and configured. We do not need a master or golden image and I'm not a friend of master or golden image except if you say, oh, I want to de deploy in a very special environment a golden image and if you then create this golden image with Phi in an automatic way, that's fine for me. But a lot of people that are doing installations or deployments with golden images are doing this by manual creating a golden image and that's very bad. Phi also provides a class system and the class system it's a little bit like Lego bricks where you can define certain parts of the configuration and then take all these bricks together to create the configuration for all your systems. Phi is very flexible and easy to expand. We call it hooks. It's like plugins that you can write. But there's a major disadvantage of Phi. Phi can't plan your, ins your installation. That's the part that you have to do. But if you plan your installation and write down the configuration files and configuration scripts, then Phi runs this configuration automatically for you. So here's now a technical overview. On the left side you see the installed server. There are three main parts that needs to be available on the server. We have an NFS root. In Phi there's a command. You can call just this command and this command creates this NFS root. Then we have a configuration space and the configuration space is just a list of or a set of um, subdirectories with some um, config files in it and everything is plain text, ASCII text, no XML things. So very easy to, to edit for an advanced system. And in this example, if you like to install Debian machines, we need a mirror or a partition mirror or a cache where the packages are available. 
On the right side, we have the install client, and this client boots up. We normally we doing the network pixie boot. Uh, it mounts the NFS root, then uh, creates access to the config space. We support different protocols, and then everything is run on the client within script. So, how does it work? First, again, you have to plan your installation. We only use very common techniques like uh, Pixie Boot with DHCP and TFTP. Um, and after the client boots up, it runs as a diskless client. It mounts the NFS root, and we use the OFS, the, another union FS, for making this NFS root uh, writable. And then we have this client running as a diskless client, so we have complete access to the local disk. We can partition it and so on. Then we define some classes and variables, which are very handy for doing um, things in Phi. So after creating the partitions and file systems, the software packages will be installed, and this will be the part that takes most time. And in the end, we are, we are doing a customization on all these um, packages, and then we can reboot, reboot the new system. The class concept means you can group a list of hosts. And every host that belongs to this class shares the same information for a part of the configuration. And normally, or yeah, every time, hosts belong to several classes. And all the, the parts of the file installation can use these classes. Here's an example for a part of the configuration space. Um, in the first subdirectory class, we have some scripts that defines the classes and the variables. And then the second part, the partitioning part, uses these classes. So if a host belongs to the class Firebase, Default, Grub, and Desktop, and Desktop would be the class with the highest priority, then in the partitioning part, Fi uses the file Desktop, and this describes how the local disk should be partitioned. I will show an example later. The same is then for the package um, selection, which packages to install. There we use all classes that are defined for a certain host. Uh, here's an example how you can define classes. It's very easy. You can write shell scripts or Perl or Python scripts. We have some magic in Phi. Everything that those scripts write to standard output are automatically defined as a class. So if you like to put all the configuration data, the assignment of, of classes to the hosts into a database, this is no problem. Then you just have to write a small script that accesses the databases and writes the list of classes just to stand it out. That's it. So this is also very flexible. Uh, variables are just shell variables that can later be used uh, with the customization scripts. As I said, the first part where data is written on the disk is the partitioning part, and there we have created something that is very similar to fstab. So if a sysadmin knows how an fstab files look, he can easily write a configuration for Phi for the partitioning. Um, the ButterFS support was added one or two months ago. That's uh, very nice that we can do all this. And you see, uh, the size of the partitions can very flexible uh, can be defined very flexible. You can say it's an, uh, we have a minimal or ma maximum size. This is an easy example of uh, for the disk partitioning. We can also. Uh, automatically create software rate and LVM partitions with Phi. Uh, this is an uh, extended uh, example, but for me it was very important that if you once uh, have seen such a file, you can just take one, modify it, and it's very easy to, to create a conf configuration of your own and no XML things in it. The software package installation part is um, we have several files. Again, here um, there's a file called BioWolf. So if the client belongs to the class BioWolf, 
this file will be read by the file part and then you only write down the names of the software packages. This part also support uh, the whole list of um, packaging tools. And in the end, after you've installed the um, software packages, you can call your own customization scripts and there we support all things of um, of scripting languages. Sometimes FI users do not use this customization script, but just say, oh, we have Puppet or CF Engine running, so we use FI for partitioning, installing software packages, and then run our CF Engine environment. This is a shell, uh, and shell example. There are some very handy tools that I've created. One is the F copy, where you can have some templates for a certain etc file and fcopy knows to which classes you belong and another is a a uh, i n s l uh, which is append if no such line which is a very nice uh, function that i know from cf engine and i re-implemented it something uh, about the installation times it's very fast um, it's, yeah, and even with a bigger cluster, there's no scaling problem. Often people say, oh, you are using NFS, and NFS does not scale, NFS is not a problem. Because most traffic on the network is HTTP traffic. So, please believe me, NFS will not be a problem. Um, why is FI the universal? Uh, installation tool because, because it started in 1999 for installing Debian but in the meantime we have installed um, Ubuntu, CentOS, SUSE, even Solaris and also on very different hardware architectures. There are the, the booting up part of FI does not need any modification if we want to support a new Linux distribution. There are also users that are installing different Linux distribution with only one NFS root. So you can use a Debian NFS root for installing other Linux distribution. This works really nice. The only thing that you have to change is how to access the package repository. You have to adjust the package names. For example, in Debian, uh, the package is called Apache, Apache 2, and in another distribution, maybe it's just called Apache or Apache minus server. So that these things have to be adjusted. And of course, that would be the main part, the customization scripts. FI is also the universal deployment tool because it does not care if you want to install a bare metal or a virtual machine or want to set up a change route or a live CD or create your golden image. It's always about installing and configure, configuring software packages. We have this thing called FI Deer install and that's how you could create a change route environment. Um, what I like to do is an, a new command called file cloud image. It's more like file disk image, but for for yeah for the enterprise version of file that does not exist, uh, I would call it file cloud image. And yeah, I think that's important that you can create. It's it's very similar to creating a change route, but a disk image needs um, the master boot record uh, thing a little bit more. Um, here is a list of some FI users. For example, uh, at the end, the Grimmel Live CD, it's a sysadmin Live CD, uh, uses FI for daily builds of eight different ISO images. So this is one user that is uh, using FI for creating Live CDs. And there are very different sizes of uh, users out now. <coughs> Phi is uh, yeah, it's a tool that that has then that gives you the, the base um, technology for deploying. We do not have a GUI. There are some GUIs out there that have Phi plugins, OpenQRM and the Goza, uh, which is used at the city of Munich. 
they deployed 16,000 machines. And the Goza is a PHP web front end for their LDAP. And using this front end, they can say, uh, please reinstall or install a new machine. And they can also monitor the installation a little bit. Phi itself includes this Phi monitor GUI, which, is, which just shows at which part of the installation certain uh, machines are on. Yeah, and now some questions. And during the questions, I, I will start an installation from CD. If you have set up the installed server and uh, the network installation is running, you can create a, a Phi CD. This is not a live CD, this is an installation CD. And with two commands, you can create the CD and then start the installation. That's what I'm doing here in a virtual machine. That's because it will be very fast. Uh, I measured it's, yeah, it will be, it will install the XFC desktop on a complete empty machine. And uh, since the virtual hard disk is in, in RAM here, it will only take 90 seconds. And the password is install me, so nobody can blame me. Oh, why did this CD just wiped my machine? You have t told it, install me. Okay, questions. I'm trying to understand the mechanism by which you configure things. Um, is it all through the packages, uh, through custom packages, or I mean, is there code that modifies the configuration? Um, yes. Just trying to understand the actual way by which the configuration is 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 made on the on the on the. Uh, target system because I didn't, yeah. didn't grasp that. that. That's absolute up to you how you want to do it. Um, in Debian we have the preceding uh, feature so we have some some questions for the packages for example do you want to in, uh, start the SSH daemon on uh, booting up the machine and you can uh, pre-define the answers to those questions. This, in Debian, it's called the preceding. Phi supports this preceding. Um, the customization scripts I'm using are modifying uh, files in etc. But if you if you are using um, create software packages that include configuration, your customized configuration information, Phi only has to install the, those packages. So, so Phi would, would never say you have to do it in this way. You are always flexible, edit files automatically in ETC or put them in the packages. Um, Can it actually infer relationships between machines? What do you mean? Uh, okay, suppose I've got uh, uh, one uh, you know, one machine is a member of a cluster, yeah. and then I've got some clients that are mem that uh, are clients of this cluster. Can uh, Phi um, set these things up, having some, you know, from a higher level uh, knowledge of these relationships, or is it? Do you need to actually specify those I individual relationships entirely within the sp individual configuration files that you provide to each of these <coughs> machines? Yeah. Then the only thing that you can do is files create a, um, a class where you define all machines that belong to this Phi classes should be configured in that way. That, that's the only thing that you can do with Phi. So the installation of the CD was finished. Even there's errors found in some log file. But we now just reboot the CD. And we, here we have a timeout of 20 seconds. Uh for one question. Grab. Yeah. Can you do criteria based installation? What? Can you do criteria based installation? Quite up. Criteria based. Like if, you, if it's got two GB RAM, I want CentOS. If it has two cores, I want Ubuntu or something else. Yeah, you, you, you can also um, install different distribution. Depending on. Yeah, yeah, depending on the classes for it. Oh, okay. um, 
on the five website there are two demo CD image. One is this one and there's another um, multi-distribution CD where you have a grub menu where you can select I want to install Debian or CentOS. Okay, one more question. Uh, hi, yeah, I, I saw that you, it's pretty easy to define the partitions and everything. Uh, we are now in the migration to GPT partition tables. Uh, yeah. Does it support that yeah. uh, out of the box? Is then, it? Um, then the partitioning part also supports GPT tables, no problem. So as you see here, the installation finished. The machine boots up and um, demo user was installed and I could log in in 97 seconds. All right, one more question from the back while the next speaker gets set up. No, 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 you need the mic. I need the exercise. Yeah, you, you mentioned... Uh, A little CF bit louder, please. I'll try that. Yeah, you mentioned CF Engine yeah. and Puppet. Do you support other uh, config management tools like uh, Chef, uh, SaltStack, Ansible? Uh, not yet, but it's it's about. I would say it's like five to ten lines of shell code that I have to write uh, been, because we only go into the subdirectories. Uh, look for files that match a class name and execute this file. And in, if you then um, put a puppet or chef script there, when, what file does not do is uh, setting up the CF Engine server or puppet server. Uh, we use CF Engine just as a script language. And if you want to do this with uh, chef or puppet, that's really easy. Some users, what they are doing, the, the installation with Phi, and then they reboot the machine, and during the first reboot, they start their puppet or whatever infrastructure. So that's also possible. Okay, thank you very much.